Welcome back, everyone. You're watching Weather Underground. That is a nice look at the best location in the nation, as former Weather Channel meteorologist Bruce Edwards used to say. I'll agree. Looks pretty good out there in Cleveland right now. Temperatures aren't bad at all. 32 degrees. It could be a lot colder this time of year. You get a biting wind. You get a lot of snow on the ground. That has not been the case. Where's your winter been? Temperatures, they just haven't been cold enough for any ice on the lakes, right? A lot of times that thing is just frozen over, especially Erie because it's the shallowest. It's the one that gets the most ice. But the ice has really been lacking across all the Great Lakes. Take a look at these stats. I think you'll be very impressed. So current ice cover on all the Great Lakes stands at 3.3 percent. It actually is the lowest uh, at this point in the season. Where would we typically be? Up here where this blue line is, we really start to see the lakes freeze over January and February in particular when the temperatures are the coldest and then we start to see some melt after that. But record setting low ice cover on the Great Lakes right now. And if you look at this, what's our maximum ice cover that we see on the lakes? Well, let's go back over the last 10 years and take a look at the season. They can vary wildly. But go back to 2014, 2015. We had about 90 percent peak ice cover on the lakes those years. Then it came down 2017, didn't have much, went right back up again, went right back down again. And where do we stand this year? What was our peak for maximum ice cover on the Great Lakes this season? Happened back in early January when we had the really cold temperatures around the Great Lakes. We maxed at 16% but these numbers are really, really paltry numbers, but it really just shows you with the El Nino pattern that we've had, we've been dry, we've been relatively precipitation free, and we have been warm across our northern states and hence hardly any ice out there. All right, now Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, historic record lows there. Now let's bring in uh, right now Brian Morowska, meteorologist with the Great Lakes Environmental Research Lab. Talk a little bit more about uh, this record winter season. Brian, thanks for being with us. We just showed the stats there. I mean, these numbers are incredibly low. What benefit might that have or what, what could be maybe even any hindrance to, to ice on the lake? Well, thank you for having me. Um, there is some benefits to not having ice on the lake uh, here the Great Lakes economy is driven um, significantly by the shipping industry, and the shipping industry benefits when ice is low on the lakes. Uh, their seasons can go longer into the fall. Their season, seasons can go can start earlier in the spring, and uh, that's a big economic driver. And so, you know, it's not all negative aspects of low ice, but there certainly are some. Uh, ice is a very big protector of the shoreline. During the winter months, that's when the Great Lakes see their biggest waves and storm events, and that shoreline ice really helps to dampen those waves out. And when we don't have it, when we don't see those shore, shore uh, fast ice sheets, uh, those waves uh, come in and the shoreline is much more susceptible to erosion and damage to shoreline infrastructure and things like that. So in these low ice years, that's a major concern up here in the Great Lakes. We know the lack of ice also keeps the lakes open for lake effect snow events. However, places like Erie and Syracuse, they're running pretty well below average. Or are we seeing any areas that are seeing a surplus due to the lack of ice cover? Not this year. Uh, it, it's certainly possible when the lakes freeze over that will shut down that lake effect snow machine. But you still need the really cold air to come down over the lakes in the first place to get that going. And we're seeing... Uh, we've seen very short duration periods of cold air coming down. So even though the lakes are open, uh, the lake effect snow itself has not been realized, or the potential uh, that we could see with open lakes has not been realized this season, and it's been a, a very low snow season across almost the entire Great Lakes Basin. Brian, I want to ask you this question because we talk a lot about Great Lakes water levels. Sometimes they can be really high. Sometimes they can be really low. Not having ice cover on the lakes, does that have any impact the amount of ev evaporation that we see or what the actual water levels may be on the lakes now or even maybe in the, the subsequent months? It can, although we are absolutely not seeing any significant changes in lake level. They're running within about an inch of where they were at this time last year. And uh, the Army Corps of Engineers, who does the official water level forecasting for the Great Lakes, does not, is not foreseeing a, a significant change up or down in terms of the lake levels going out about six months. So uh, the, the lack of cold air, again, is keeping the evaporation in check. Uh, we're getting the precipitation on the most part. It's just falling in a different form than we usually see here in the winter. So it's falling as rain as, as opposed to snow. Uh, so right now the lakes are not showing a, a significant deviation or expected to show a deviation in water levels based on the lack of ice this year. 
seems like a six and one half dozen and another about 30 seconds left. Is this something that's not necessarily a problem if it's a one off, but could be a problem if it if it happens more regularly? That's exactly the case. Um, beyond uh, the, the things we talked about earlier, there are other economic drivers. Uh, Ice fishing is big here in the Great Lakes, as long as also snowmobiling is to the tourist industry. And there are biological issues. Different uh, species here use the ice to harbor eggs and protect young. So multiple years like this could begin to have a significant impact uh, if, if we see them best stack up. Well, Brian Morosco, we thank you so much. Physical scientist and meteorologist with NOAA's Great Lakes Environmental Research Laboratory. Really appreciate your time. Thank you very much.